All right, welcome back. Now our GMC tweet of the night. Hey, Pony, check this out. I know they're big fans of this show. They're big fans of your show. Shenderovich, Shenderovich, and Fishman, the twins. Al Shenderovich had a hole-in-one yesterday at Nevillewood. He had a seven iron from 162, number eight. So, you know, they got everyone's wallets yesterday for sure. So congratulations to Al Shenderovich. And by Which the way, reminds me, oh, go ahead, Richie. I was going to say, by the way, speaking of a show that's sponsored by the Shenderovich twins and Fishman there, Inside the Huddle, um, usually I'm the host for that show, but Pomp stepping in this week. I had to have the day off and take the day off. And um, Jeff Hathorne's filling in for Mueller, who uh, had knee surgery. So we, yes. got, we got Pompey Annie and Hathorne in this show. Uh, it's coming up this weekend, streaming live on CBS News. Go ahead. What's your story? Well, I was going to say that reminds me of the hole in one of one of my favorite stories. Jim Colony got his first hole in one of his life at Jerome Bettis's celebrity golf tournament, which is also the same day that Joey Porter tried to fight Chris Muller. <laughs> and I was right there and I watched that unfold. It was incredible. But there were obviously a lot of millionaires at this event because ex NFL players, people connected with the Steelers and big corporate people in Pittsburgh. And you know the tradition, when you get a hole in one, yeah. you pay for drinks. Yeah, uh, That was probably the worst timing of a hole in one in golf history because Jim had to go into his wallet that day for people with very expensive tastes, Richie. Did he? That was not a did cheap he? bar tab. Oh, yes, he did. I, I, would yep. have, I, I would have thought that maybe he would have just left, you know, got out of the cart, went right to his car and left. No, because everybody knew he made such a big deal out of it. In fact, I think the next time he was at the Steelers, Mason Rudolph had found out of it and ran up the gym and gave him a little slap in the fanny to congratulate him. Oh, on I that was there. We were doing an interview. I, I remember Mason coming over there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mason Rudolph, who evidently thinks if he were, had been given a chance by the Steelers, he'd be Geno Smith. Right now, Richie, what do you make of that? Uh, thinks he would have had a winning record potentially. Uh, I don't know. I, they got made. More problems in the quarterback right now. Um, and, you know, it starts with the defense. But and do the you play think calling. they've mishandled this quarterback thing when they benched Trubisky? Yeah, I do. When I they do. decided I, to go I, to pick it? No question. I think they should have stuck with Trubisky for a little bit longer. This, and uh, maybe, maybe Trubisky, instead of playing safe, if he would have played like he did in that Tampa game, he might not have, uh, he might have given them mm -hmm. a reason for, to keep him in there. But at least. I thought that they were going to give Pickett the chance at the bye week so he gets an extra week um, or at least at, at least prepare him um, for that Jets game because you had how many days to do that. So right. it was just bad timing, I think, all in all for that one. Let's go out to Ralph in the Hill District. How you doing, Ralph? Hey, Ralph. Hey, hey guys. Um, listen, I got Peyton Manning is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, and um, he raved about Kenny Pickett when Kenny Pickett was at Pitt at his camp. Kenny Pickett's our man. He we just need an offensive line and a new coordinator. But listen, I got a I got a coordinator for y'all. Now listen, Nebraska's coach got fired. Mark Mark Whipple, who coached no. Pickett. You don't think so? Ralph, look, I brought this up probably like three weeks ago. I, I'm on board with you. I, I just don't know if that's the, the direction the Steelers would go. I know he has ties with the Steelers. I don't know what they would do uh, with an offensive coordinator. Well, do they give say this a chance about Mark Whipple? Mark Whipple is very well respected, but Mark Whipple was fired by Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin had Mark Whipple, got rid of him. You remember that? He was yeah. a quarterback's coach, coach for with Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. So I don't know what that relationship is like. Uh, I know Whipple as a quarterback's coach. I would not have an issue with that. But I don't want to go back to college for another offensive coordinator. They've already tried that with Matt Canada. It's failed. I want someone who's either done it at the NFL level or who's been groomed in the NFL and is ready to be an offensive play caller. So if you want to have Mark Whipple around as like a consultant, I'm fine with that because Kenny trusts him, but I don't want him to be the guy calling plays. Let's go out to Jack in Mount Lebanon. How you doing, Jack? Hi, Jack. Jack, you there? Went up in the draft. What? You, you, you guys are talking about the Steelers moving up in the draft. We didn't talk about them moving up. I don't know what Jack was talking about, but yeah, I mean, potentially, <laughs> I mean, not, I don't think the Steelers would move up in the draft uh, no matter where they pick. I think, like, I agree with you. I think Weidel would try to trade and get more 
more equity, get more draft stock um, yep. somehow and move back no matter where they are. I mean, I could definitely see this team. I I'm with you. I could see the team winning seven games somehow this year. But look, I don't know. There's nine games left. I, I just the way they're playing and the way I feel about them and, and being around them, I don't, I don't see how they have a winning record in the second half of the season. That means they'd have to go five and four, and I just don't see it no matter who they're playing. Well, I think Kenny will play better. I think Josh Allen got off to a similar start in Buffalo. Now, it took him more than a year to become a star, but I think there's an example of somebody that didn't exactly sprint out of the gate, was more of a guy that needed time and uh, needed to ref refine himself and get reps in order to become a great quarterback. And I do think their defense has potential with Watt. Now, we only saw it one game, but it was so good for one game with the five turnovers of Joe Burrow, the worst game Burrow's ever played, that it gives me hope that against guys like Andy Dalton and Sam Ellinger and Marcus Mariota and you know some of these quarterbacks they're going to see, P.J. Walker in Carolina over the second half of the season, Richie, that the defense can have dominant games against Lamar Jackson. They've Baltimore twice. They have been very good against Lamar Jackson. He has not killed them. They haven't played an AFC North game yet at home. So that's why I don't think they're going to finish at the bottom of the NFL. I think they'll finish closer to average. I do think Tomlin's non-losing season streak ends, but I don't think they go like four and 13. We got to take a break here in about 45 seconds, but I agree with what Ben said this week. I would just scrap everything right now. Um, you got to do something <laughs> different. You have to do something different. Well, I'd what play Warren right now doesn't work. I'd play Warren a lot more. I'd start Warren against the Saints. There's a lot of Warren critics who say, well, he does it in garbage time. He does it in passing situations. Well, at least he does it, period, yeah. which we haven't seen from Najee. All right, we got to take a break. Back in about two minutes. Stay right there.